Okay. So we're going to use Emmet. So Emmet is already installed on Visual Studio Code. So you, nothing special that you have to do with it. It works about 94% of the time. Now, that's back of the envelope kind of calculation. Um, occasionally, it will not work. I'm going to show you how to recognize uh, that. And let's see here. Actually, Brian, I'm going to switch you if you don't mind, just in case, uh, if I can figure out that. Uh, there we go. Okay. So if it doesn't work, it's usually one of two things. Either the Emmet's, I guess it's, I don't know if it's a server, how it, how it really runs it. Um, it did not catch it, or you forgot to hit tab. The two reasons why it doesn't work most of the time. And so we're going to look at that. Get that one out of the way. I am. Wow. Somehow the host muted himself, it said. That's bizarre. All right. Get this situated. Still getting used to Windows. Still not a fan. All right. So let's create an HTML page. You can do that however you choose. I'm just going to do it uh, using the touch command and go ahead and go that method. All right, I'm gonna close out everything I don't need. So we just have that on there. So the first and probably the coolest, as far as I'm concerned, Emmet that you're going to learn is the bang. Bang in leet speak terminology, I don't know, in, in technology means the exclamation point, right? You end everything with a bang. So it's shift one. And if you notice, already it picked up this Emmet abbreviate. So that means that the uh, Emmet engine is working properly. Now, the way to engage that or to invoke it is to hit the tab. So I've hit exclamation tab. We have the basic structure of a web page laid out for us. Now, notice where my cursor or my tab is. It's here at the viewport de uh, device width. We don't want to modify that very rarely. I've never modified it that I can think of. I don't know if Brian has, but I have not. So hit tab one more time. It will then take you to your initial scale. Typically, uh, we'll leave that at a one. So that way our website is at a scale of 100. It's not too, you know, it's bigger or smaller. There may be times when you want to adjust this, uh, but once again, I never have. Hit tab one more time and it takes us to document and we can give it a title name. So I'm going to call it Emmet. When I hit tab one more time, <clears throat> excuse me, it takes me to the body of the HTML. So in one, two, three, four, five, six, basically in seven very simple methods, we have a web page. Pretty sweet. Um, you won't be using this much anymore because here very soon, you're not going to be writing HTML pages anymore. Out the window, you'll be writing uh, single page applications, which use a the crazy child of JavaScript and HTML. It's called JSX. Pages. Oh my God, and the results are amazing, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's... <laughs> okay. The results <laughs> are amazing because it's Emmet. Okay. So everybody got that first one mastered? <laughs> I knew it. Already you've doubled the amount of 
stuff you can do in a few keystrokes. But let's do something that's probably a bit more practical for what you're going to, to use. So the way that Emmet works, you no longer type greater than or less than. And so no more angle brackets. You just type the Emmet code for what it is that you want to do. So we're going to start with something very simple, div. So notice I type di, and at di, it has two options, dr and dv. So for div, we need to have all three of them, all three of the letters. But when I hit tab, it creates the front and back. Not terribly impressive, I know. But let's go. To, let's look at the next option that you have. All right, so how do we, in CSS, how do we denote a class? What is the special code that we use? So if I have class of happy, how would I mark that in my CSS? Uh, dot, dot happy. Dot happy. So check this out. We can do that. We can say dot happy. And it creates the class for us inside of a div. And let's look at another option. Let's say that we want to give it an ID of happy -erist. I don't know if that's a real word, but how do we do? We'll just say happiest, if I can spell that. How do we denote an ID in CSS? It is an, yeah. Right, pound sign, Octothorpe, hashtag. So we can do the same thing here. We can say, I don't know what's going on with Zoom. We can say hashtag or Octothorpe happiest. And it creates that for us. We can also chain them together. We could say dot hi, um, hashtag buy. So now it created our div with a class of hi and an idea of buy. You starting to see some potential here? But the next question I know you're gonna ask is, well, great, but we are learning semantic HTML and we don't use divs unless we have to. How do we deal with that? So what's, let's say we do a section and we want to give it the class of top. We do just that, dot top. I think you can say if we had a P tag of bottom and um, top, <laughs> really screw this one up. Now we've created the P tag, the class and the ID. Who's starting to see some potential here for accelerating your development? Everything, everything's going zoom. <laughs> Zoom, zoom on Zoom. Okay, still, all right, I get it. Still not completely impressed. What about when you have a situation like this? You say, um, let's say you have three class names that you're going to give. How do you think you do three class names? So let's say class one dot, class two dot, class, ooh, if I can never learn to spell. All right. Starting to get some believers. Okay, let's let's take us one step further. How about what's the most complicated or boring part about doing a header nav with links? So we can do it a couple of ways, right? First, I'll show you this method. We say header tab nav tab li tab. And we've got this kind of structure that we'd have to break out. It's kind of a pain. Still a lot faster than typing them as they were, but let's do this. Let's say header and inside of the header. So we also want to have a nav and inside of the nav, we want to have a list, but how many, um, or actually we'll do eight tags at this point. So, how many links? I see Brian with five. Well, we can say multiply that by five. 
So how quickly can we get through and write a header? Now let, let's look at this. Let's let's think about what other things that we could do. I'm sorry. Could you do that one more time? Yeah. Just to make sure. So I... we say header, right? Greater than nav greater than a times. Let's do a lot. Nineteen. There you go. Now, what's really cool about the way this is set up, if you notice where my cursor is at, and let's say I just want to do a, a hashtag for now. If I do three, tab, puts me in the middle, gibberish, tab, back to a hashtag or whatever I want. See, I can go through the whole thing and only hit tabs. That's really nice. Because then you're not moving your mouse, you're not clicking around, you're not fumbling around, you can get through it really quick. But let's look at other options. Okay, let's say that you have a header and inside that you have your nav and inside that we're gonna have four A tags. But then what happens if we want to jump out of that? Okay, so let's look at what options we have. What if we, so we can say the shift six or the caret and we can say a P tag when we hit that. So notice, it built our whole structure down, and then we have this P tag that was moved up one. What about a situation where we have a section? Ah, all right, so let's say section, and inside of there we want to have, if I could ever spell, article times two or three, and inside the there we want to have a, h3 and parallel to that we want to have a uh, image and parallel to that we want to have a p tag just broke my brain i'm that's it we're done for the day kenneth is done mind equals balloon so look at that and there's our three articles we have all of our stuff and if i had not moved it i could have tabbed through every opening tick 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 we going through them one step at a time can you activate that again if you've already clicked out of it so that you can start tapping again or no no um emmet that's one of emmet's little weird things if you backspace it and i think it's let me see control p yeah. So if you go back to where you're at and you hit tab, it won't work. But if you hit control space, it will then give it to you and then you can tab it again. So when you create that, I guess that ladder effect with the section to article times three, after that, it it means the the times three is referring to everything after that or it's just referring to the tag to, it's in this case it's referring to create three articles and inside of each article we want an h3 uh image and a p tag that's wild all right well we also like math and that it'll it'll multiply it by like first like what's next to it sometimes you'll have to use parentheses if you want to do like an unordered list with yeah, allies we're... with anchors inside of them and you want to do like 10 allies with anchors inside of them you have to put wrap them in parentheses yeah we're gonna move to those some other ones now so let's do a unordered list so let's start with an unordered list right and inside that unordered list we want an li <clears throat> and let's say that we want to have them with all the class of color. Well, we, this is gonna put us at an interesting situation, right? Maybe we want them all to be, if you think back about the 10 colored boxes that we have, for instance, or I don't know, something where you want them to be incremental. So we can then say dollar sign, that's going to create us a number. And when, then we can say how many we want. So notice it incremented all of our classes. Let's look at other options. 
All right, so what if we were to take, <clears throat> excuse me, what if we wanted to do something like, uh, let me think of a good one. Oh, well, this is kind of interesting. So I'm going to go backwards a couple of times. For whatever reason, you want to have more than one. You want a tens place. Maybe you want thousands place. All right, so it doesn't work there because I'd already, there we go. So now it started off at zero, 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 one. And you can use this dollar sign incrementer about anywhere that you want. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of some other ones in that that you might think about. You can also do grouping inside of parentheses, like uh, Kristen said. Ah, I know, let's, let's try this. So maybe we have a P tag and inside of that P tag, we're going to have to put in a title. So we, we would normally do our P tag. So we can use the boxes, we can say P tag, and then, hello everyone. And that creates a title with the string inside of it. Um, let's see, let me think of some other situations where you would use it. Like I said, once you kind of get the basis of it, you can just start to get creative. And I want to do a couple of CSS as well. Um, yeah, pretty powerful. Lots of opportunity to create things. You also have unique situations like this. So if you do an A tag by itself, notice it takes you to the link. We'll put a four and hit tab again, puts it there. You have things like A and then you can say link and that starts off an HTTP link for you. So maybe you wanted, you know, google.com and you're gonna say Google. Um, you can do the same thing with mail, uh, break. I mean, uh, pretty much every HTML command that you have or that you know about will be able to, um, ha that has a lit an emit counterpart. Um, Brian, can you think of any others that really should be so box brackets give you uh, text. Oh, I, I know one. We can do this. We can say, let's say we want to do a header of increasing number. All right. So we're going to do an H1, an H2, and an H3 for whatever reason, because we are now code slinging monsters. And we want to call this item... And we want that item to match the H1, H2, H3. We can then step out here and put in some curlies and say header because we're making a header. And let's put our dollar sign in again. And we want to make five of those. So notice H1, item one, header one, H2, two, three, two. So wherever you put the dollar sign, that's going to give you an incrementing number. Sometimes that'll be really handy. Sometimes it will be a complete pain. More dollar signs, more digits in your number. I'm going to save that. I'm going to open a CSS real fast. and Or I'm going to make a CSS. I'm just going to call it styles.css. And... We have the same structure, basically, that you have inside of the HTML. And you have so many, so many ridiculous ones. Um, how about this one? D, anybody have an idea what that's going to stand for? Well, here, I have to put it in the body or something. D colon F, display flex. 
Booyah. Right. Um, and it's really cool because every one of them has one. Sometimes you have to hunt them down. You know, you have to kind of think about it. But what's another one? Let's say justify. So notice that justify content is here. But let's think about what maybe it could be. What happens if we do J, C, uh, J, colon, that? All right, that's not an image command, right? Sometimes they're obvious, sometimes not so much. But still, with only typing three letters, I was able to do just by content center. And Visual Studio Code is going to try to help you. How about font size? Right? And you can kind of think of what, what combination can you use for font size? What happens if you do FT? Well, FT gets us font stretch normal. What if we add an S to it? Oh, that's still font stretch semi-expanded. Right? So this sheet that I'm going to give you will provide you with every single one of them. And I'd, honestly, I don't use them as much just because I forget that they're there. Um, but let's think of a couple of, oh, how about border box? I think our box sizing border box. Let's see. Oops. So BX is box sizing border box. Two letters. Sweet. Um, let's see. Let's look at some other ones that you might use. So this is the document that I'm going to give you. And as I said, it is not small. It goes on for a while. But um, margin is an M. Margin auto, M-A, well, M colon A. Margin top, M-T. Box sizing, B-X-Z is the official. Um, with font, font, uh, font plus will give you an M and a name. Uh, font family, F-F, that's a nice one. F-F colon S will automatically give you yours. Serif, SS, sans serif. Um, and like I said, there's just about every CSS command that you can think of is probably in here. Vertical alignment, and there's some in here. List style, oh, that's a good one. Um, saves you lots. Border radius, BDRS, makes perfect sense, right? Border radius. So that is Emmett. Any questions on Emmett? I wanted to keep this short, maximize some, uh, some of your time, but any questions? Why wasn't this part of the HTML? Well, you need to learn how to write HTML before you start to use your tools. Roger that. Yeah. But once you understand what you're doing, if I took away Emmet, could you still write HTML? Of course you can. But now we can use our tools to accelerate the mundane so that we can spend our time doing more advanced concepts. Right? We can do that developing rather than coding. And so I'm not a big fan of the term coders. Uh, coders are translators. And that's what you do. That's what you've been doing is coding. But we want to move you from coders to software engineers so that you're creators, not just translators. And so Emmet will help you get through the markup so that you can spend your time using your brain. Anyone else? Kenneth, are you okay back there? Yeah, I'm good. Got you. <laughs> He's like, oh man, I'm done. Can I get a beer in a video game? I'm through. I mean, I'm <laughs> gonna get those regardless, but no, this is awesome. <laughs> me too, me too. All right, no other questions on Emmett? Not that we can think of at the moment. So I've given you the basics on how it works. I will drop this practice. 
don't try to learn them all at one time. Don't hang the poster there. And every time you're like, uh, no, learn two or three that you use all the time. Once you're, you become comfortable with that, go pick you up a couple of more. The HTML oh, I, is pretty simple. Do what? I'm sorry, Kenneth. Um, will any of this uh, translate over to JavaScript at all? Sort of, but in a different in a different way. But the strategy is much the same. It no longer uses Emmet. We use uh, uh, snippets, um, but the structure is basically the same. Cool. But I know, yes. and uh, if you're dealing with a React file, if it's a instead of naming it a JS file, you can name it a JSX file, and it'll give you Emmet commands for yes. JSX. Yes. And but that's that's like in a, like another month. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure I'll probably do one of those as well. You get what you've written it the long hand, and you know what you're writing. Then it's time to make use of those tools. But take two or three that you know. Look up your favorites. Throw them on a post-it. You know, get comfortable with them. Use them every chance you can. Then add a couple of more to the skill set until you have your top 20 or 30 that you use. HTML is pretty easy because you don't have to actually change the words. So that one's easy, but with your CSS, get a few that you like and grow your vocabulary. Practice doing those step down, step ups and parallels. And man, you can scaffold out a basic web page in minutes, have everything you want there. The one that we did not go over, and actually let me do that real quick, is lorem ipsum. So many times you're building your, 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 oh, let me come up here and I'm just going to say uh, section and inside that section, I'm just going to have a P tag and you need a certain amount of text to fill it up so that you can style it, but your UI didn't give you text or you're like, Hey, I need to have some stuff here. So lorem ipsum, now there's a whole lot of them. Lorem ipsum comes with Visual Studio Code, although you can go into extensions and get zombie ipsum and beer ipsum and holiday ipsum and everything else. But it's just a way to generate dummy text. And the way that you do that is O-L-O-R, and it'll usually pick up at that. And if you hit tab, there you go. It just generates you some garbage text. If you want to say I want more, for instance. So you can say lorem and five. That will give you five words. So you can just shoot down there. You're like, I know I'm going to have a header here. It'll have five or six words. Good. You also can do things like four. And that'll give you four full sentences. So again, if you have... If you have some, let's say that you have an article and inside that article you have a H1, beside that you have a P tag and beside that you have another P tag, right? So we drop that out and we can say lorem four tab. And then we want uh, lorem, we want more text here. This is gonna be a pretty good amount. So I'm gonna say two and then tab it one more time and say lorem, um, let's say 10. And now I have that entire portion completely filled out with text and structure. So it makes it very easy to style. So do not forget the lorem. And like I said, you can go ahead and download uh, all kinds of really cool ones. My favorite's uh, probably Zombie Ipsum. It's pretty cool. Um, but there's Superhero Ipsum and Marvel Ipsum. And, you know, you can, you'd be amazed. Dog Ipsum and Cat Ipsum. Foreign languages of all kinds of Ipsum. And it's just filler text. So a really nice tool where you can just scaffold out everything in a matter of minutes, style it, and then go put in what you need. All right, cool. Then I'm going to stop recording real quick.